All right, let's get started. Um, welcome to CS uh, 2050. Uh, there's a few topics today. One is, uh, we'll call it stars and bars, but there's another formula we'll do. Uh, recall we're, in, we're deep into the counting uh, unit, like combinatorics. We, last time we talked about permutations, we talked about combinations of things. We talked about like if you have n elements and you want to find a permutation of r of them, like what's the formula for that? What's an n choose k? We talked about binomial theorem. Today we're going to do two more counting problems of ones that are mm, considerably less general, but they're actually not too hard. And uh, there's going to be a simple proof for both of those things, right? So uh, we talked about a permutation uh, of the, the number of ways to permute n elements, right? Let's say you have uh, uh, an n letter word, a word. How many ways are there to reorder the word? To rewrite the word, uh, excuse me, to permute the letters of the word. Let's say you have the word, I don't know, um, uh, cake. How many ways are there to order the letters of the word cake into another four letter word? Now, by word, I don't mean like an English word, just how many ways are there to reorder four letters into another four letter permutation? Four factorial. Four factorial. There's four choices for that one. There's four cho three choices for this one because C has already been taken, or whatever letter you've chosen here has already been taken. There's two choices for this one. And unfortunately, after the last one, you don't have a choice anymore. The choice is forced. It is determined for you, so there's one. So there's simply four factorial. Okay. So to form an n, it's called an n permutation of n elements is just n factorial, right? Now suppose you wanted a three-letter permutation of four letters, right? Let's suppose you had the letters C, A, K, and E, and you wanted not four letters, but three <coughs> letters. What would you do? Does anyone remember the formula? Only, only three letters. Yeah. But you have four choices. How many ways can you permute three elements when you get to choose from n elements? n factorial over n minus r factorial. You get, I'll just write it out. Oh, that's four. My bad. Oops. Let's say you have uh, four choices for this one, three choices for this one, and two choices for this one, right? So this would include things like ache, chi, things like that, right? It's going to be n factorial over n minus, uh, excuse me, uh, n factorial over uh, the number of digits you have left. So n minus, let's say, k factorial, right? The reason for this is because you're going to go, you're going to have n choices for the first one, you're going to have n minus one choices for the second one, n minus two choices for the second one, and then you're going to keep going until you have the n minus kth choice, right? But then it's going to be, uh, excuse me, n over n minus k plus one. But then this is just n factorial if you divide by uh, n minus k, right? Double check that for me. Yeah. Uh, if, wait, when you say permutation, is that uh, ordered? Yes, let me, let me double down on that. A permutation, in a part of the math lingo, you've got to know what words mean. A permutation is ordered. The, the first element is different than the second element. The second element is different than the third element. A permutation is different than a combination in that sense. Permutation is ordered. A combination is just a selection of items that are not ordered. Think of a permutation as a lineup. You put the items in a line. Okay? But a combination is one in which you just select a few items such that the order does not matter. You put them into a bag, and then you shake them up, right? So if there are n over n minus k ways to choose uh, to order uh, k items of n items, what is the number of ways to uh, choose a, a k element subset of n elements? N to the k, that would be the number of ways to choose n items, uh, to choose k items of n items with duplicates. N to the k would be the number of ways to choose n items, excuse me, choose k items and n items if you have infinite copies of each item. 
I'll give you a hint. I said the, the question was the number of ways to choose a k element subset of n elements. The word there, important there, was choose. So choose a k element subset of n elements. It's going to be what? n choose k. n choose k. What is n choose k? It's n factorial over k factorial over n minus k factorial. This is simply the number of ways to choose uh, a k ordering, a k permutation of n elements. But then you divide by the number of possible ways you could mix things up, right? Like if you want to, when you choose a permutation, you're overcounting. Because, uh, for example, let's say you're, you're choosing letters of three. You want to choose the three element subsets of four letters. You don't want uh, a, k, e, and k, e, a to be different. Right, because those are the same three elements. So if order doesn't matter, you divide by the number of ways to permute those elements, and that's going to be the k factorial here. Right? If this is going to be uh, the number of, uh, of, of p of n k, then n choose k is going to be p of n k divided by k factorial. Right? The number of ways to uh, permute those those elements. Right? Questions on this part? Now. Importantly for the word cake here is that all the letters are different. That's kind of important. Let's suppose we wanted to do the word success. Okay, Here's the problem we run into with trying to apply the previous formula to this new word is that there are multiples of each letter. There are multiples of 3, excuse me, there are 3 multiples of s, and then there are 2 multiples of c. So if we were to do something like a Seven letter one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we were to do like S, 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 something like this, let's say we name this S1, S2, S3. Uh, if this is S2 and S1 and S3, we shouldn't matter which S goes where, right? When we choose a, a permutation of it, there's multiple ways to choose the S. We want the S's to be what are called indistinguishable from each other. Two objects are said to be indistinguishable if they look the same. The first S looks exactly the same as the last S. That's sort of what we mean. When someone says count the number of ways to order the letters of success, they don't want you to double count the first S and the second S being different, right? So we have an immediate trouble applying this previous formula directly to this. So we're going to try and come up with a new formula, one that allows for repetitions of characters when there are uh, a few of them. Right. So what we can do first is we'll just choose the placements of each letters and then apply the product rule, right? Because that's sort of what we did previously was apply the product rule. There was n ways to put the first letter, n minus one ways to put the second letter, n minus two ways to put the, something in the third spot, right? Instead, we're going to apply the product rule, choosing the placements of the of the number of each kind of letter one at a time, right? So suppose we just consider s first. How many ways are there to place s? If we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 spots, we have 7 spots. How many ways are there to place, uh, place uh, 3 s's in 7 spots? Where the s's look the same. Uh, 7 choose 3. Yes. It's going to be 7 choose 3. Why? Um, because it's the position that matter, not the, not the order. So we just uh, choose seven, three positions out of 7. Exactly. When you approach a problem like this, you've got to like, am I, ask, am I being asked about the order or not? And then you have to say, well, if I'm not being asked about the order. So the word indistinguishable here basically means it doesn't matter what order you put the s's, only the places that you put the s's. So you want to choose three spots out of seven spots for the s's to go in. You have seven spots, and you want to choose three of them. So you do seven, choose three. You've chosen, you've now chosen seven spot of the seven spots. You've now chosen three of them. How many spot, spots do you have left? You have four spots. You have four spots to choose from, and you have two c's. How many ways are there to choose two spots? Out of four for this for these C's. Yes. 
We're going to multiply these because it's the product rule. You choose the spots for the seven S's, three S's. Then you choose the spots for the, four, the two C's. Now you have a U and an E left. How many spots are left? After you've chosen three S's and after you've chosen two C's, how many spots are left? Two. There are two spots left. And you want to choose how many U's are there, let's say. It's one U, right? So we're going to choose. There's two spots left. We're going to choose a spot for the U. So we've, of the two spots, we choose one. So sort of trivially, we can do two choose one. Right? Two choose one is what? Two. Two, yeah. That one's always easy. Um, now we have one spot left, and we have one letter left. So I'm going to write it this way, but it, you should know that one choose one is what? One. Yeah, so one spot, it's determined, right? It's not, we don't get to choose in some sense. Choose one spot of one spot. Okay, well, that's dope. There's one parking spot left in the whole parking lot. That's the one you take, right? Um, let's work this out. This is going to be seven factorial over three factorial, four factorial. And double check me when I do this math, okay? Because big numbers are hard, uh, especially for me. We have four factorial over two factorial, two factorial. We have two factorial over one factorial, one factorial. And then we got... 1 factorial over 1 factorial, 0 factorial, right? So let's start canceling stuff out. Bam, bam, bam. And 1 factorial and 1 factorial and 0 factorial are just going to be 1, right? So I'm just going to, but I'm going to leave those. So we're going to get 7 factorial over 3 factorial, 2 factorial, 1 factorial, 1 factorial, 0 factorial. Let's just ignore the zero factorial for now, because zero factorial is what? One. One. So I just won't write the zero factorial. Um, does anyone know what this number is? Can someone double check that for me? Oh, I actually didn't write it down. Someone type that in for me. Let's see what we get. Well, if I were to simplify this, we're going to have 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 divided by 3. So it's going to be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 over... It's 20? 420. 420, that's what I thought. Okay. Let me just double check. 2 factorial is going to be 2, so we're going to get over 2. Oh, this is going to be, oh, it's going to be 2. So it's, oh my God. Uh, I believe you. Okay. That sounds right. Um, cool part about combinatorics, the numbers blow up really big. Okay. Now imagine you were to sit there and try to count out the number of ways to do this. That would take too long. You would have, you would use 420 lines on a piece of paper. I don't know how many lines are on a sheet of paper, like 80, maybe. So you're going to use like six sheets of paper. Com you don't even care about the orderings themselves. You care about the number of orderings. So it's, applying combinatorics is, is such a powerful tool. How many ways are there to do something? I don't even know. I don't have to write out the number of ways. I just, I don't have to write out the ways. I just can know the number of ways from counting. Very powerful stuff here. Um, Let's create a generalized formula for this. We kind of see a pattern here, right? There's seven spots. There's three S's. There's two uh, C's. There's one U and one E, right, if I spelled success correctly. So that's actually a pretty easy formula to generalize. Um, here's what it is. If you, um, if you have permutation, of n items, by the way, when it says permutation of n items, it usually means a permutation of all n items. If it says a k permutation of n items, it means only place k of them, right? So usually, implicitly, a k perm in, when it says permutation, it means an n permutation, like a total permutation of the n elements, right? Um, if you want a per permutation of n items such that uh, n1 uh, items of uh, type 1 are indistinguishable from each other. And then you have nk items of type k that are also indistinguishable from each other. By indistinguishable from each other, what we mean here is that s looks the same as s but S does not look the same as E. Um, and uh, N1 plus, 
plus nk is equal to n, so all n items are one of the types of n1 through nk. The general formula is then the number of permutations of these n items uh, up to the indistinguishable of each item is going to be n factorial over n1 uh, factorial, uh, nk factorial, to nk factorial, right? Again, each n1 is the number of items of n1. And everything that is of type 1 can, looks no different than the other items of type 1. But there are n1 of them. Here, for example, there are three s's. This is just a simple generalization, right? We'll prove the formula pretty simply. It actually won't even be a combinatorial proof. It'll just be arithmetic. But any questions so far on the, on the statement? This is one of those ones that's really wordy. Like, when you apply this, you know how to apply it. You'll see this in the wild. But, like, you won't remember this definition exactly. And one items of type 1 are indistinguishable from each other. Dot, dot, dot. And k items of type k are indistinguishable between each other. And every item is one of the k types. And there's a n permutation of n items. This is a lot of words. But we understand sort of what we're trying to solve, right? OK. Uh, what's the proof? We're just going to repeat this proof in terms of uh, what we did previously. So there are n. We have n total spots, and we want to choose spots for the n1 items first. There are n1 items to put spots for. So the number of ways to choose uh, spots for these n1 items is n choose n1, right? We've now chosen n1 spots for the n item. Of the n spots, we've chosen n1 of them. So we have how many spots remaining? We, want to, we have n minus n1 spots remaining, and we want to choose spots for the items of type 2. There are n2 of those items, so we'll do n minus n1, choose n2. Right? Then we're going to, how many spots do we have remaining? n minus n1, minus n2. And we want to choose spots for n3. For the items of type 3, there are n3 of those items, right? We're going to continue with the product rule until we're going to get n n items, but we already chose n1, we already chose n2, we already chose n3, and we already chose nk minus 1, and we want to choose the last k minus 1 spots, nk. So it's going to be like that, right? Well, let's just work this out now. Um, we have n choose n1 is going to be n factorial over n1 factorial over n minus n1 Factorial, right? Maybe I'll do it like this. Right? That's n choose n1. Uh, what about the next uh, binomial coefficient? It's going to be n minus n1 factorial over n2 factorial. over n minus n1 minus n2 factorial, right? The last one is going to be n minus n1 minus n2 minus, minus uh, nk minus 1 factorial uh, over nk factorial. What is uh, n minus n1 minus n2 minus dot 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 minus nk minus 1 minus nk? Yes, because n1 plus n2 plus n dot 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 nk is just n. So when we take n minus n1 minus n2 minus dot 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 minus n to the k, and then we minus n to the, minus n to the k minus 1, and we minus n to the k, we're left with nothing. So it's going to be 0 factorial here. Right? Zero factorial is what? One. So that'll, that'll work out. Now notice, though, we don't have to foil everything out, thankfully. n minus n1 is, appears here and here, right? So we can simply strike those. Oh, wait. Excuse me. Two factorial, right? We may simply cancel these out. Those are both numbers. We cancel them out. Notice that n minus n1 minus n2 is on the denominator of the second term, but on the numerator of the third term, if I had drawn it, and so on. 
We're going to strike these out repeatedly, and then the denominator of this one is going to be the numerator of this one, right? So we're left with what? The numerators, all the numerators are canceled out except the n factorial. What's left in the denominators? It's going to be n1 factorial, n2 factorial, nk factorial. And then n, n0 factorial is just 1. QED. That's our formula. Right. So you want to choose, uh, if you have several kinds of items, and they can be told apart from each other, and you want to permute them, this is a formula to apply. Questions on this? It's basically just a generalization of the one we did for the word success. Right? All right, uh, let's get on to the uh, next thing, and then we'll do some problems. Uh, this is called stars and bars. Stars and bars was like, I remember when I was learning this, this was kind of difficult. And in hindsight, maybe it wasn't so hard. Stars and bars is basically, here we put several items into distinguishable boxes. The boxes can be told apart from each other. But within each box, you couldn't tell the items apart. So let's do a slightly different problem. We have, let's say, n indistinguishable items. That means you cannot tell the n items apart. They're all marbles. They're all identical looking donuts. You know, they're not like people. They're not like letters or something, right? They're indistinguishable. And you have, let's say, k distinguishable boxes. You want to put the k, you want to put the n items into the k boxes. But the items cannot be told apart but the boxes can be told apart. When something says distinguishable, it usually means permutation because the order matters. So what we really mean is let's say you had six items and you had, I don't know, th three boxes. Some of the ways that this could look could look like this. Let's say you have three boxes. You could do two in the first box, one in the second box, and then three in the third box. That's a, those look like dice, but they're simply Three boxes with two items in the first one, one item in the second one, and three items in the third one. Okay. What about, here's another one. Let's do uh, one item in the first one, none in the second, and then five in the third. That's, that's a way to put six items, which cannot be told apart, into three boxes, which can be told apart. And notice that is different because the boxes can be told apart. That is different than this one. Right? We want to count those differently. Before we get into solving this, do we uh, understand the problem statement? Um, what's an example we could do here? We'll do some examples, I think, later. But we under perhaps you have like animal crackers and you need to give them to children. How many ways can you give them? I don't know. You know think of something. Um, we'll, we'll do several examples of like how to apply this. Uh, this is, I think, a challenging thing to, like, if you were to formulate it yourself. If you were to, like, given this in the wild and you were to come up with a solution to this, I don't know if uh, I, I could do it. But thankfully, there is a great solution to this problem, and we're going to use combinatorial proof. So we're going to find a bijection between the number of ways to put n indistinguishable items into k distinguishable boxes, and we're going to biject that to something that we can think about and we already know how to do. So what we're going to do is actually, it's called stars and bars, because if we have, let's say we have the box like this. Let's say we have okay, we have three boxes. We have six items. Two are in box one. One is in box two. And three are in box three. What we can do is bijack this to the following. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my picture of boxes with the items in them, and then I'm going to erase the bottom here. Bam. That is now a string of stars and bars. Those are stars. Well, actually, they're not stars. They're dots. Those are stars, and then the, the, those are bars. Um, so if we have n items, 
and we have k boxes, we have how many stars do we have? <coughs> now, here's the trick. Um, we don't actually need the, hold on. Yes, we don't actually need the beginning and end bar, because those are always fixed, right? So if we had three boxes, how many bars do we have? If we had k boxes, how many bars do we have? Minus two. Yeah, it's going to be, for if we had three boxes, we only have two dividers. So we're not counting the boxes, we're counting the number of dividers between the boxes. So placing uh, the, the way to partition these items into these distinguishable boxes is actually the number of ways to place these dividers. But there's only k minus one of the dividers. Right? And we don't count the, the first or the second one. Right? Wow. What is the length of this string then? If we have n stars and k minus 1 bars, what's the length of the string? n plus k minus 1. We have a string of length. OK. Now, the number of ways, again, we're trying to solve putting n indistinguishable items into k boxes. We've now find a, found a bijection. This is the, the, that's the crux. Would you believe that for the number of ways to write strings of these two letters, the two letters being a star and a bar, of n stars and k minus 1 bars is exactly the number of ways to put n indistinguishable items into k boxes? If you believe that bijection, that's the combinatorial proof, now we simply need to count the number of strings that there are. Right? If we have a string of length n plus k minus 1, and we have k minus 1 bars and n stars, how many strings are there? And again, you cannot tell the bars apart. You can tell the positions of the bars apart. You cannot tell the stars apart. Right? How many are there? This one, I think, is a good exercise. Let's think about this one for a moment. k minus 1 plus zero times n. Sorry, one more time. K minus one plus zero. Uh, uh, times with the, the. What is K minus one factorial from? Oh, it's, it's, I think it's the, the way to put the bars. Right. OK, so you have N plus K minus one spots. And you want to choose K minus one spots for the bars. Uh, so it should be. Uh, P, P, and K P, N, K. Is it? Is it? We're almost there. You're almost there. You, you, you were so close. P, N plus K minus 1. And, uh, Give it to me in factorials instead of P, N. Um, so it should be um, N plus K minus 1 factorial divided by uh, uh, K minus 1 factorial. And what else? n minus k plus 1 factorial. But if you divide by n minus k plus 1 factorial, you'll get 1. We'll just get 1 over k minus 1, right? That's the numerator. Wait, n factorial? n factorial. This is just this formula, where you, n1 is k minus 1 and n is uh, k. The only thing that you slipped up on is you did choose, you did do correctly choose the k minus 1 spots for the bars, but you counted, you overcounted by distinguishing the items. That's all. So you need to undercount, divide by the number of times you overcounted. You, when you gave the formula without this n factorial, you basically said item one looks different than item two because you didn't choose them to be dis different when you use the permutation formula. That's the only difference. This is something we know, though. What is this written as a factorial? This is, it is a uh, form, but what it, what, write this as a binomial coefficient. What is this as a binomial coefficient? We gave a combinatorial proof of a way to flip this around. What is another way to write this? n plus k minus 1, choose what? You have n plus k minus 1 spots. You can either choose spots for the k minus 1 bars, 
which you can't tell apart, or you can choose spots for the n items, right? If you have a string of stars and bars and it begins with, a, with, a, with if it begins with a bar, that means that the first box is empty, essentially. There's no stars in the first box. So if we did like this, empty, empty, and let's, put, let's say we put six there, this would be analogous to bar, bar, one, two, three, four, five, six, like that, right? So we, the stars and bars trick, I think, is, is really powerful because, like, without knowing how to map, if you didn't know the mapping to strings, I don't think anyone could, any of us could figure this out, right? This is crazy cool. Someone figured this out in the 1800s. Count the number of strings of stars and bars, and then uh, we can simply apply a simple binomial coefficient to get the answer, right? Now, this is something I think you should remember. I actually don't ever remember the formula. But what I do is I just recommit this proof to memory, just like, oh, I have, well, I put the stars in the bars, and then I only need the divider, so it's going to be k minus 1, right? Yes? How does the it equal n plus k minus 1? Ah, n plus k minus 1 is the string of length n plus k no, minus 1. Like, how does it equal the? Ah, um, well, recall that we proved uh, n choose k is actually equal to n choose n minus k, right? So you can choose k items. We gave a combinatorial proof of that, but you can give an arithmetic proof easily. Here's, the, here's both proofs. Uh, choose the k items, n choose k, OK. But choosing k items is the same as not choosing n minus k items. So you say, ah, you know, when you're picking a team, you have a group of people, you're playing dodgeball. I pick these three people. That's the same thing. That's the same number of ways as not picking seven people, you know, something like this. Here, what we did is we chose the spots for the k minus 1 bars. And we get n plus k minus 1, choose k minus 1. But choosing spots for the k minus 1 bars is exactly choosing the spots for the n stars. So if you choose the spots for the bars, it's the same as the number of ways to choose the spots for the bars. Stars, every spot that's not a star has to be a bar. Right? That's the only reason those are equal. Now, the second, so combinatorially, that those are equal. The second reason they're equal is that if you plug it in, right? So, um, n choose k is going to be, I'll just write it here, tiny, n factorial over k factorial over n minus k factorial. But if you, what is n choose n minus k? That's going to be n factorial over n minus k factorial over what? What goes here? n minus, n minus k in parentheses. Yes. So n minus, n minus k factorial. What is n minus n minus k factorial? OK. So these are equal. So that's the arithmetic proof, right? Choosing k items is the same as not choosing n minus k items. Yeah. Stars and bars. Um, I like doing this one first, because then you can apply this formula easily. Even though you can just double rederive the formula and proving the stars and bars, you can just apply it. You have n1, you have n bars, so n1 is n, and then uh, k, you have k minus 1 bars and n stars. So you just apply n1 is uh, n, n is n plus k minus 1, and then n2 is k minus 1. Yes? So the middle one is saying how many ways to arrange. Um, Which middle one? This one? No, the middle equation. The, that's saying the right one. This one. Uh, that's saying how many ways to arrange k minus 1 bars and n plus k minus 1. Spots. Yeah. So we did it three ways, basically. First, we could say, well, we have a string of length n plus k minus 1. And we want to choose k minus 1 of the symbols to be a bar. So well, it's going to be n plus k minus 1 over k minus 1. Choose k minus 1, right? Another way we did it is we did it this way. We said there are n plus k minus 1 spots. And of those spots, k minus 1 of them are going to be chosen for bars. Now we want to indistinguish between the stars. So we divide by n factorial. And this ends up being equal to this, which ends up being equal to this. So they're all the same. Right. Rather than memorize a formula, it's more important you know how to apply. Like you, if you know the proof or like the, the reason for behind the proof, you never have to memorize a formula. You can just not saying like you'll every time you need this in an, an exam setting or something, you'll rederive it. But you'll if you know where the formulas come from, you you uh, will have to do a lot less memorization. 
Let's do some problems uh, applying this. Questions on this, on the, on the stars and bars? This is, I think, a kind of like, the, it's the hardest combinatorial thing we'll do. This is the last lecture on combinatorics. This is, I think, a somewhat difficult, at least when I took, actually, th this was difficult for me when I took 3012, not even like the 2050 level. When I took 3012, which is, you'll have to take combinatorics if you're a CS major. That was, I, I, that was even challenging for me then. So. Questions on that? Let's do some applications. So the stars and bars was actually invented. I mean, combinatorics, I, I mentioned, was not a science. It was like, I mean, people used to bully you if you said you were into combinatorics. So the original application of stars and bars was not counting the number of ways to choose n indistinguishable items from k distinguishable bins. It was counting the number of integer solutions to an equation. You know, mathematicians are going to be annoying about this. So let's say we have like x1 plus x2 plus x plus x3 plus x4. And let's say this is equal to 10. And we want each xi to be greater than or equal to 0 and integral. That means they're integers. So how many solutions are there to this equation? Well, let's give a couple solutions. We got like 3 plus 0 plus 0 plus 7. We got 10 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. 9 plus 1. Let's do something simple. Let's do 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 6, 8, 2. And that's going to be different than 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2, right? But those are all solutions to this equation. How many solutions does such an equation have? Well, notice that each x1, x2, x3, and 4, we are, we, you take a problem like this and you break it down, right? First off, what's distinguishable? What's indistinguishable? The items are indistinguishable, right? 1 and 1 is the same as 1 and 1. But the bins are distinguishable because x1 being 1 is a different number of solutions than x2 being 1, right? So we see that we have distinguishable bins and indistinguishable items. So we're going to know, you should know, OK, this part I can't tell apart, this part I can. This is a stars and bars thing. So I'll give you a, a set of formulas at the end of class today. You'll be like, this is the one that this is. You, you use this one, n to the r, n to the n choose k, p and r, uh, the stars and bars formula. Like, which one do you apply when? So you should look at the thing and think, which, which case am I applying? Um, are, the order, are the items ordered or not ordered? You know, you bring it up that way. This one, we can see that the items are ordered because these two are different. And we can see, but the items inside, like, 3 is different than the than items in 3, right? It doesn't matter how the, the three ones in that are grouped. So we're actually going to have uh, stars and bars. n is equal to what and k is equal to what? How many items do we have? 10 items. How many bins do we have? We have four bins. So it's 10 plus 4 minus 1, choose 4 minus 1. By the way, of which of these formulas to use, I usually like k minus 1 instead of the n, because k minus 1 is usually smaller than n. Just there's usually less bins than there are balls. So we usually will pick this one is, easier to, is usually easier to calculate. Not that it matters. Um, what is that going to be? That's going to be 13, choose 3. Someone look that up for me. Double check my answer. 286. 286, yes. That's what I have. So, wow, we didn't even have to write out all possible ways to do that. We just were able to apply stars and bars. Again, the power of combinatorics, I'm not going to write out every single way to do something. I'm just simply going to do a little bit of math, and I got the number of ways, right? I think that's pretty powerful. Um, but this one is kind of easy because you can directly apply stars and bars. A lot of times in the wild, it's not exactly stars and bars. It's almost stars and bars, right? Or something like this. So let's consider several variants of this problem, right? How many ways are there to do x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to 10, such that xi, these are all greater than or equal to 1 and integral? This is a challenge. Stars and bars assumes that two bars may be consecutive. Okay, we could rederive the stars and bars, but then like prevent that if a bar if a, if a bar was chosen, another bar could not be chosen because that would mean the box is empty. 
So we, we, we could avoid choosing empty boxes. Here, we want to, we want to have our bins be non-empty, OK? 0 plus 0 plus 0, these solutions don't count anymore, right, if we have this variant of the problem. An integral here means it's integers, right? But each xi is greater than or equal to 1. So does anyone have an idea how to start this, start this one? Yeah. Um, so you take the string of n stars and k minus 1 bars. And okay. Remove the, you like. So you say that if, if you place a bar, then you then the next one has to be a star. So that like removes an option for the next thing. So it's like, so it's n minus one. Choose k minus one instead. That would be, so that would be correct, and that would be a way to do it, but it's, I'll show you, and that would be, that should be your first way to try to do it, but I'll show you a shortcut, that rather than rederiving the combinatorics, we can change the problem statement a little bit and reapply it, yeah. Could you, like, assume that since there's one in each bin, could you, like, subtract from the 10? Yeah, exactly. That's what we're going to do. So. Well, this is one of those tricks. It's called, I don't know what it's called. It's like Slack formula stuff. But this is like a very common tool. I don't know if it's named something. But like you transform the problem in a certain way to do it. What we're going to do is rename the variables. We're going to say let, let yi plus 1 is equal to xi. Yi, every variable has meaning, OK? Everything means something. Yi here, like y1, is the amount more than one that x1 has. x1 can't be 0, so x1 has at least 1. y1 is the amount more than x1, more than one that x1 has. So we may write as yi plus 1 is xi, right? And we know that xi is greater than or equal to 1. Since xi is greater than or equal to 1, we know yi is greater than or equal to what? Yeah. 0. So let me rewrite the equation. We're going to have y1 plus 1 plus y2 plus 1, plus y3 plus 1, plus y4 plus 1 is equal to 10, which is going to give us y1 plus y2 plus y3 plus y4 is equal to what? 6, with yi greater than or equal to 0. What's the number of ways to do this one? n is going to be what? 6. Yes. k is going to be what? It would be, wait, 4. Or 4. So uh, 6 plus 4 minus 1, choose 4 minus 1, is going to be, uh, that's going to be uh, 9 choose 3, which is going to be what? 84. Give me just one second. Let me double check. Yes. 84, you said? Okay. So there's 84 ways. Notice that that's a lot fewer than 286, right? Um, here's another combinatorial way to think about this. Now, this is sort of like a, a linear algebraic way to think about this. Here's a combinatorial, combinatorial way to think about this. You have two things. You have, first, you have 10 items. Second fact is that each box must be non-empty. What that means is four items have been determined already for you. You don't get to choose the positions of four items. Because you put one item in each box. One item must be in each box. So four of the items have already been determined, and you cannot count them. So instead, you count the, the positions of the remaining items, which is going to be 10 minus 4, which is 6. Right? Questions on this method? Interesting enough, we can apply inclusion exclusion. Suppose I asked you for the number of ways such that there is an equation to x1 plus x. Let's consider this problem. Let's say we have x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to 10. xi is greater than or equal to 0, and at least one box is empty. And these are also integral solutions. So you can't have like 2.1, right? No, no decimal solutions allowed. What is the number of ways to do this where at least one box is empty? K 
you like take away a partition? Say it a little. You take away one of the bars. Yes. So there is there is an easy way and a hard way to do everything. That is also a first attempt that even I would try. But I'll tell you, in the spirit of we found this cool trick without having to rederive the stars and bars, what's the way to do it? Yeah. You find the ways to to do it where none of the boxes are empty and you subtract it from the total ways. Yes. So the total number of ways, total minus no empty, as we'll call it, is equal to the number of ways with at least one empty is equal to the total number of ways minus the number of ways with none empty. Right? What's the total number of ways? Yes. What's the number of ways with none empty? 84. So what's this? Two, two, two. two of two, yeah. So combinatorics will always work. Like, you can always say, I'm going to go back and I'm going to force one box to be empty. And actually, that wouldn't be too hard here. You simply replace one bar with a symbol that means two bars. And then you force wherever that goes. That's, that may not, may not be too challenging. But here, I don't have to delegate to that level. That can sort of... By transforming it into a way that you can simply apply the formula, it's a little easier. Yes? Would that be equivalent if you just removed uh, a variable? Like, for example, you remove x4. Uh, but you, which box is empty? The boxes do matter. So it would be the number of ways if you removed x4, and plus the number of ways you removed x3, plus the number of ways you removed x2, plus the number of ways you removed x1. Because those, those are different. Which box is empty does matter. And in fact, more than one could be empty. So then you would have to do the chaining inclusion exclusion where you subtract off the intersections, right? And that would be a little complicated. Here we can just sort of do the big sweeping way. Right. Questions on this? I have one more. Uh, oh, that was upside down. I have one more problem for you. And then I'll give you a list of helpful uh, formulas. Suppose we had the same problem. We're trying to find numbers of integer solutions to equations. But instead of an equality, we have a given number of items. Uh, suppose I have the following different constraint. x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 uh, is equal, not equal to 10, but less than equal to 10. OK? How would we, there's a way to do this, right? The first way to do this would be, um, rederive this for every value of the number of n from 0 through 10, right? Each xi, wow, xi must be greater than or equal to 0 and they're integral. So here's a bad way, not necessarily a bad way, but a first way to do this. And like usually you want the most elegant solution to a problem. You don't want to have to sit there and do a lot of calculation. Here's one way that would definitely works, but maybe tedious. Count the number of ways with n equals 0, plus n equals 1, plus n equals 2, plus n equals 3, right? And then you do a summation of those binomial coefficients. If n equals 0, you have 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is one way, right? If you have n equals 1, you have how many ways to put the one item into four boxes? That's four ways and so on, right? Plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. But there's another way to do this. Let's think about a transformation here, right? We can delegate back to the stars and bars combinatorics, but let's see if we can just transform this into something that looks stars and bars-ish and then just apply the formula. Let's take a second to think about it. This one's, I think, cool. I think uh, we can choose, we can uh, calculate the number two let the sum be 0 and let the sum be 10, and then uh, uh, let, the, um, then let the total uh, uh, take out the, the other two, two uh, situation. Sorry, can you see the last sentence? Mm, I think we can, uh, we can calculate the, the, the numbers of weight so that the sum is 0, and then the sum is 10. Mm -hmm. And then we calculate all possible possibility, like uh, minus two, two, uh, those two situations. So the number of ways of 0 is 1, because there's only one way to have no items in four bins, which is 0, 0, 0, 0. I feel like you're close to, wow. I feel like you're close to 
the spirit of the answer, but maybe another formulation. Yeah. You add another box that contains the stars that, that contains the numbers that aren't in the others. It's called a slack. This is a, I know the name of this trick is called adding a slack variable. Let s be equal to 10 minus x1 minus x2 minus x3 minus x4. Okay, so s is what's called the slack variable. You can study many problems about inequalities by bumping them up a dimension and studying a problem about equalities. That's a very common trick. You just go into a higher dimension and suddenly things are working out now. Now, this is the same thing as studying the number of ways to study the sum of x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus s4, x4 less than equal to 10. The exact number of ways to put 10 items into those four distinguishable boxes is the number of ways to put 10 items into these five boxes, right? Because suppose you have a way to choose less than 10 items into those four boxes. You simply choose S to have the remaining items. S is just the difference between, it's, it's called the slack, right? If x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is like 7, it doesn't reach 10, then you say S, th S is going to be 3. X, S is the slack. It's what makes the inequality to, an inequality to an equality, right? It brings it up to, up to, up to term. You just add another box to throw in the missing items. Yes? I don't know. If, I think like this way is more complex, but could you do like find the like combinations for when it's equal to 1 and then equal to 2 and then equal to 3 all the way to 10 and then add those up? Yes, that would actually that would work. But I don't want to add 10 things. Yeah. That would, be, that, would, that would work, well, including 0. But that would work exactly. In fact, this is the same. You see, you, uh, I would leave it to you to work out, like, if you try to add, like, do a summation. Maybe you'll apply some binomial theorem stuff. You'll see that this is actually, you'll pull out some n factorials. You'll move stuff around. You'll get the same binomial coefficient that this is going to have. Right. So if we were to apply the stars and bars here, n is equal to what? 10 items still. k is equal to what now? We have five boxes, so we have n plus, uh, n plus k minus 1. Choose k minus 1. That's going to be 14. Choose 4, which is what? Yeah. You, you knew that one? You... Crazy fast. I, oh, okay, yeah. Calculate. Um, we kind of expect that to be the answer because there's a lot more of them with less than equals than there are equals, right? When we did equals, we did, we had 286 solutions equal, 10, right? We have 1,001 of them uh, less than equal to 10, right? So, so of the solutions that equal 10, there's a quarter of them, basically. 286 of the 1,001 solutions are those that equal 10 and with s equals 0. And uh, the other 740-something solutions are those, 730-something solutions are those of 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5, right? And so on. So quick, quick application of stars and bars. Any questions on this one? Pretty methodological. You, sometimes you got to some rule, product, rule it out, apply a small transformation, you'll get the answer, right? Let me give you a recap of all the formulas we've done so far. There's no questions on this. So suppose you have uh, an R permutation. So you want to permute R permutation of n elements with repetition. So you're allowed to duplicate elements, and there's infinitely many copies of each item. You have n distinguishable items, and you have R spots to put those n items in but you have infinite copies of each item. 
How many ways are there to do this? We can take a second. This one, I'll, I'll tell you, is easy. Are you allowed to repeat? Yes. Be n to the r. n to the r. You have n choices for the first spot. Now, normally, when you don't have repetition, you have n minus 1 choices for the second spot. But here, you have n choices for the second spot, n choices for the third spot, n choices for the fourth spot, because you're allowed to repeat. So it's going to be n to the r. Okay. What about an r permutation? of n elements without repetition. N, n factorial minus uh, n minus r factorial. n factorial over n minus r factorial. Why is this one true? This one is true because you put n items in the first spot n minus 1 items in the second spot, n minus 2 items in the third spot, and so on. So you're going to have n factorial, but you're not going to permute all n items. You're going to permute r of the n items. So then you divide by n minus r factorial. Right? Um, let's say you have a k combination uh, without repetition. The items are all distinct from each other, and you want to choose k of them, of n items. This one I usually give away because I say you choose k items, right? So n choose k. Um, by the way, n factorial over n minus r factorial we also call p of nr, right? And when you choose an R permutation of n elements, to can turn that permutation to a combination to divide by the number of, rep, of repeated ones. So it's going to be n choose k is going to be n factorial over k factorial over n minus k factorial. And we derive this formula by taking p of n k and then dividing by k factorial. Right? That's the way we derive that one. Let's say we have. Um, uh, n distinguishable items but uh, there are n1 items of uh, type 1 indistinguishable from each other nk items of type k What, does anyone remember this formula? Um, n factorial divided by n minus one uh, n one factorial to n k factorial. Yes. Okay. Let's say you have uh, n indistinguishable items. And you have k distinguishable bins. What's the number of ways to put n indistinguishable items into k distinguishable bins? Here again, the word distinguishable and indistinguishable very important. Can't tell the items apart. Can tell the bins apart. Close. Almost. N plus k minus 1 choose k? K minus 1. You had it backwards. You, had k, you said k minus 1 choose n plus k minus 1. But it's n plus k minus 1 options, and you choose the bottom one. So it's n plus k minus 1 choose k minus 1. Right? And again, this is also equal to. Uh, n plus k minus 1, choose n, right? Either one will work. The minus 1 is because you're counting the dividers and not the bins, right? You don't need to count the bins. 
if you can count the dividers between the bins. And there's exactly k minus one of those. Right? Questions? Simple, simple formulas. All right.